My husband 36 male doesn't want to take me 27 female and our son 6 male on a trip to see his family. We've been married for about 9 months, together for 6 years. My husband is from Argentina. He grew up there and moved to the US, where we live now and where I am from, about 10 years ago. I've never met my husband's family, but he did take our son there once when he was about 2 years old. I was busy with work and couldn't make it, and it was the only chance my husband had to travel. Well, recently my father-in-law retired from the company he helped found. My husband's parents are selling the family home and downsizing. It's apparently a really big deal and my husband wants to go back to Argentina for a month to celebrate as well as help his parents move and just visit his family and old friends. They're from a very small town and my husband has already told everyone he is coming back. They are all very excited. I was excited too. I've never met my husband's family. I am in a position where I can take time off work and I was excited that my son is now old enough that he could actually have fun and remember this trip a little better. Plus, I've never met my husband's family. I feel like after six years together, it's time for that to happen. When I brought up plans for what I wanted to do while there, my husband informed me that he wanted to go alone. Now it's not like he's only going for a week and we can't afford it. We can more than afford it and it's a whole effing month. He says he wants the time to enjoy his family without having to worry about entertaining our son or me. He wants to visit old friends and he says he won't be doing touristy things. So he didn't think I'd be interested in going. When I mentioned that I wanted to meet his family and didn't know when I'd get another chance. He said that he understood, but it just wasn't the right time. This conversation turned into a pretty big fight. I said that I had the right to go along with him and meet his parents and that it was important to me especially since our son is in touch with what is half of his culture. My husband said I have no right to tell him if I should meet his family and that there will be other chances and he feels one month is too long for our son to be in a strange country. Side note, let me be clear here, my son is fluent in Spanish and has been to this house or town before. Sure, it was when he was very young, but it's not a totally new experience. Plus, both his parents would be there, as well as his grandparents and entire extended family on his father's side. My husband was adamant about wanting this trip for himself. I'm at a loss. Am I wrong for wanting to go? Is my husband being weird about this? I don't know how to explain to him why this trip is so important to me. I need advice. Okay OP. So from the information you give us, there is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't go to Argentina with your husband. And all of his reasons are lame and weak SF like really. His whole family and town are gonna be there celebrating this whole new stage in your in-laws. Your in-laws life. People you've never met actually. But it's not the right time to go because he just doesn't want to do touristy things, which you haven't asked for, and he doesn't want to waste time entertaining you and your son. Basically, you'd be a burden on his fun time. It just sounds so sketchy. While you were telling your story I was thinking, huh, maybe he's gonna go out and buy cigarettes like my grandma's dad used to say before he went to see his other family. If this whole celebration is how I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be a lot of barbecues, a lot of family time in the quincho and enjoying one another. So you should definitely go because you are family and your son more so. So yeah, I'm sorry OP but I'm gonna call BS on this whole thing. This in my opinion is a huge red flag. He's being dodgy and sketchy as F and you need to try to find out the truth. And what do you guys think about this whole thing? What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. RapperGuy69 says, You're absolutely correct. That's completely weird. I'd honestly be concerned about if he had some other reason he was going out there. Old girlfriends, other kids, Dr. GS, I don't know. He's got to be hiding something. Have you ever spoken to his family? Do they even know he's married? I'm completely hitting random things here, I know, but that's beyond bizarre. If he was concerned about your son being bored or in the way or being a hindrance to the family etc. while they're moving, then you'd think he'd just suggest you guys go out for a week or two rather than the entire month versus not meeting his grandparents at all. I'd be extremely concerned that he's got something going on that you're not going to like. And OP responds, I don't think there's any shady reasons he's keeping from me. I mean, he took our son there. If I had a secret girlfriend or was involved in Dr. G.S., I wouldn't be bringing my chatty two-year-old along for the ride. One slip up and he's telling mommy about that pretty lady who had a sleepover. No, I've never spoken to his family. I've asked if they know about me and he says they do. Plus, like I said, he's taken our son back there at two years old. He was a total chatterbox at two. It would be hard to make sure he didn't mention anything about his mom while there. 
Big Duke says. The fact that you have never interacted with his parents is the strangest part of the story. My gut feeling is that he has left something out of the story with you, his parents, or both. I would work at remedying this. Basically, why are you either hiding me from your parents or your parents from me? That's not okay. And OP responds. I texted him asking if there was something he wasn't proud of or something he was hiding, and then I just wanted him to be honest with me. He said there was nothing. I've asked in the past why I've never met or talked to his parents and he just said that Argentina is far away and that there really isn't much to talk about. I really feel like there's something he's hiding. I just don't know what or how to find out. Waiting for a dragon says, I don't think it's weird to want to go. I can't wrap my head around why your husband doesn't want you to go with him. Is there a chance that maybe he is worried that you will perceive him differently if you go there? I'm not saying you would, of course, but do you think that might be a worry in his mind? How much contact do you have with his relatives? Do you speak to them regularly? And OP responds, I don't know why he would be worried about that. He's very in touch with being Argentine, if that makes sense. I mean, he's taught our son Spanish. We actually speak in Spanish part of the time. I was fluent before meeting him. He eats a lot of traditional foods, etc. So I don't know how I could perceive him differently, I guess. As for his family, I haven't had much contact. He actually doesn't speak to his family often. I've talked to one of his brothers a few times, and he even stayed with us for a night when he was in the country for an interview. Other than that, not a whole lot of contact. I've never spoken to his parents or any of his other siblings. Additional information from OP's comments. There probably won't be a lot of opportunities to visit them. His parents don't fly, and tickets to Argentina are pretty expensive. Plus, my husband and I both work and finding time off to actually go is difficult. I get why my husband would want to go alone. And if this was for a weekend or even a week, I might agree. But it's a whole month. His entire family will be there. I don't need to be a tourist. I'd be just fine renting a car and taking our kid out to do day trips if my husband wanted time alone with his family. He says he doesn't want me there at all, though. Part of the reason he doesn't want me there is he said I wouldn't be well received. Because I'm very white, blonde-haired and blue-eyed, but my husband is white, too. He has a darker complexion, sure, but his brother is also blonde and blue-eyed, and my son was practically platinum blonde back when he went, and I'm fluent in Spanish, so it's not like I'm going to be bumbling around like an idiot unable to communicate. I've brought the option of us flying down there together and then leaving after a week and he shot it down. He wants none of it. I've always trusted that his family knows about me, and I've met one of his brothers, but I guess there's always a chance that they don't know. He seems close enough to his family, but they don't talk too terribly often. He always talks about them fondly and has never mentioned any bad blood, but only talks to them maybe twice or thrice a month. As for not meeting them before our wedding, the last time he went to Argentina before our son's trip was before we met. We were already living together with a kid when we got married. It was a courthouse wedding with two of our friends as witnesses. My parents didn't even come. OP short-term update number one. I've texted my husband to ask if there is something he hasn't told me or something he's ashamed of me knowing. And that I wouldn't be mad and I just need to know. He tends to communicate better over text and he's not home right now, so I thought he would be more willing to open up. He said that there was nothing and he simply didn't want me going. I also called his brother who said the same thing. He doesn't know why my husband doesn't want me there, but that I should just respect his wishes and drop it. I'm really not convinced that nothing is going on. I just don't know where to go from here. OP's short-term update. I've been texting with my husband over the course of the evening. He's out of town for the weekend, basically demanding answers and offering every compromise I can think of. He says he isn't hiding anything and I'm not going. End of story. So I guess I'm at the point now where I need to find answers myself. I have no idea where to start though or even what I'm looking for. Any help would be amazing right now. Well, the community obviously understands that this whole thing is terribly dodgy. I mean, come on, his whole attitude about it is just trying to shut it down because he doesn't like OP asking questions. He's clearly hiding something. And OP knows this and she's gonna go looking for it. Update, so here I am. I guess I'll just get what were the most prominent theories out of the way. No secret family, sorry to disappoint. And we were married for less than a year. He was a citizen before we got married so it definitely wasn't a green card scam. I just married a horrible person. Anyway, after reading all of your replies, I decided to call his family alone. So as soon as he got home, I got his phone and found his parents' number. 
I called them and they were confused to hear from me. I started out by introducing myself, saying that I was sorry that we didn't get a chance to meet four years ago and that it looked like I wouldn't be able to make it on this trip either and that I was very sorry. And here's where things took a turn. They told me that they had no idea that my husband and I were still together. What? Apparently, my husband told them that I had left him a few months ago. Looking back on it, his conversations with them have not mentioned me in the past few months. His brother knew about this but also knew we were still together. In his story, I took our son away from him and was currently living elsewhere and he hasn't seen his son since I left. So in his parents' eyes, I'm this horrible BTCH who got knocked up, used my husband for money, and then took our six-year-old son and left. All of this is pretty bad, but it's not the end of this crap show. Here's the real kicker, since I have apparently ditched my husband and taking my kid with me. He has been super lonely and told his parents he would like to use this trip to meet some women in Argentina and hopefully move back down there soon. His parents have been arranging meetings with old family friends and are basically trying to find him a girlfriend, so they were pretty shocked to find out what was really going on. I told his parents the truth about our relationship and his mother did seem especially upset by it. She apologized and said that she wanted to meet me and see her grandson, even offering to fly up to where we lived. They've met him and I would like him to meet them again and I would like them to be an active part of my kid's life. They seemed like nice enough people on the phone and were deeply apologetic for everything. But I don't know if I'm ready to meet them yet. I want to, but I want to talk with them some more and hopefully Skype them too. I thought my husband was a great guy when we met and we saw how that turned out. And these are the people who raised him. I just want to be very careful. I haven't said yes yet. She is still a total stranger to me and since I've learned I can't trust my husband, I'm a bit wary about his family too, but I will consider it. Also, I absolutely will not be going to Argentina where my husband will be, especially not with my child. If after talking to them for a while I deem it safe, I might agree to have them come to us and visit. But even then I will be present for all interactions between them and my son and they will not stay with us. And I don't think my husband will try to kidnap our son. He would need my consent to take him out of the country. As for me and my husband, I told him what I knew. He was angry at first and told me I had no right to snoop. But even he realizes he has no leg to stand on. And about his reasons, I didn't ask and he hasn't said. I verified that everything his mother said was true. Told them I was leaving and we were getting a divorce. And that was that. I left that evening with my son to a hotel where we have been staying since. He didn't really fight it. All of my contact with him since then has been purely legal stuff and with lawyers involved. My son and I are leaving from my parents' house this weekend and staying there until the end of the summer. As for the future, I don't really know. I don't think my husband would try to kidnap our son. Right now, I have all of his papers in temporary full custody. He's with me and I'm not letting his father see him. I won't know the custody situation until our full court date or divorce, but I am going to fight for full custody. I'm doing everything I can to make sure my son is safe. As for the rest, I might move close to my parents or I might try to find an apartment here. That's still a bit up in the air. Thank you to everyone for the advice. Sorry it's not as exciting as everyone had hoped, but I'm also pretty glad the fallout has gone somewhat smoothly. Well OP, I'm gonna call it a positive update. The only sad part about it is that your son now knows that his dad is a parada. Now I don't know if that word is still slang in Argentina for guys that do this kind of crap. Maybe my Argentinian viewer can help me with that, but that's what I know. Anyways, OP, it's a positive update to me because your spine was fantastic. You found out the truth and you didn't play at anything. You just grabbed your kid and left. That is that you're getting a divorce. Story 2. Me, 26 female with my best friend, 27 female. I just got engaged and wanted to share the news and all she said was, relationships are trash. To be honest, I'm kind of done with this relationship but wanted to check if I'm out of line first. I've been friends with Laura for like 15 years now. We went to high school, college together and now live in the same city, though in different parts. Basically, we were single for a while together. But after about a year of working my new job here, I met a boy and we fell in love. Yesterday, after three years of dating, he asked me to marry him. I was so excited and so of course I went to tell Laura right away and so I texted her a picture of my hand with the ring and she sent back, that's cool, relationships are trash. I was a bit taken aback to be honest. She can definitely be rude, especially when someone else shares any news that she doesn't have. Like, when I got my job, she was still unemployed and told me that my job was a crappy temp one anyway. 
It wasn't temp at all. But when she got her job, we had to have a big party to celebrate the start of her career. Anyway, I'm thinking of sort of ghosting her after this. I don't have very many friends, so for my best friend to kind of crap on a special day made me really angry and sad. Well OP, it sounds to me from the way you're describing your best friend Laura is that she has funnel relationships. You know, the wide side for her and the narrow side for everybody else, which to me translates to, this person isn't really your friend. A friend, regardless of what's going on in their life, will always be happy for you because they love you. You gave us two examples where any best friend in the world would be happy, but she just crapped all over your news. So yeah, I would say go with your gut feeling and just ditch this person, she's not a friend. Now, the way that you go about that would be interesting because you've got three choices the way I see it. One, you can take the super high road and just send her a polite message telling her that you outgrew the friendship and move on. Two, you can simply ghost her, which means blocking her, deleting her number and never answering any calls or any messages ever again. Three, you can be petty and send some sort of snide message for her to understand that you clearly are over the relationship as well. So what do you guys think OP should do at this point? Which of the three options do you think is best suited for this situation? Let me know in the comments section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Stuck Hand says, when she asks why she's not in the wedding party, that's cool, friendship's a trash. And Dopey responds, lol that's cold, I like it. I'm stealing the towels says, wow, with friends like Laura, who needs enemies. She's clearly peanut butter and jealous of your life accomplishments, viewing them as attempts to one-up her instead of opportunities to celebrate you. I think, unless you're happy for your friendship to be a competition forever, you're better off without her. Fading out is the best and most mature thing to do. Though the petty side of me would be tempted to text back with, and this is why you're still single and miserable. Do not contact me again, and then block her from everything. And OP responds, ha, huh, I like that too. I really wanted to say something nasty back, but resisted it. You're totally right. I'm just going to fade out now. It sucks because she was my only real friend, but I'm better off without her probably. And Muppet Maniac says, I'd text back. That was really rude and uncalled for. She's jealous and I wouldn't let her get away with not being called out. Then I'd ghost her. Update. It's been a few days since I posted here for advice and wanted to give y'all a follow-up since I got so many kind comments. And a few crappy ones, people can be mean. Anyways, a few of you gave me the courage to follow through with my decision to stop being friends with Laura. I didn't reply to her after she sent the original relationships or trash message for two reasons. One, I was busy having fun with my new fiancé. I love saying that. And two, I wanted to see if she would apologize. Surprise, surprise. She texted me like three days later asking if I wanted to go dancing and just wrote back, nah. She then sent me a long message about how hard it was to be my friend since I never wanted to do anything with her anymore because I was too busy with my crappy boyfriend. That was pretty much the last straw and I'll admit it. I was petty and just wrote back, that's cool, your friendship is trash. Thanks user stuck hands for the suggestion. It felt great. After I posted here last time, I did a lot of thinking and realized that I was the one who was actually looking out for us and trying to make the friendship work and Laura just used me to talk about herself and make herself feel great at the expense of other people. I cried a lot after that because, like I said, I don't have a lot of friends and it hurt to realize my best friend didn't really care about me. But with the comments here and the help of my fiancé, I realized I wasn't doing enough to love myself or allow myself to grow. So I signed up for some yoga classes and hoped to meet some new friends here. And I've also decided to go to more of the events in our community to hopefully meet cool neighbors. Thanks for giving me the courage to love myself y'all.